Hello, everybody. Welcome to our Dev Week. I am Débora. I am from Brazil. I work at Incora Brazil Division. And uh, I, it's an honor for me to be here to present all these great professionals. Today, we are going to talk with Rudit, Rudit Garcia, and she will present for us. This is a way follow your curiosity towards mastery and leadership. Is that Rudit? How are you? Good, thank you so much, Clara. And also, I will present you. And remember, everybody, that uh, if you want, follow us in our social media. There is the link here, yes. And if you have any question during the presentation, you can chat it to Rudit, she will answer, okay? Our interaction will be will by writing. And she works as a Q&A manager at Incora Mexico Division. In her 15 years of experience, she has worked with the travel and loyalty industries from q &A engineering front. Being people-centric and extremely curious, her activities over the years have expanded beyond her initial q and role. From working with other teams to creating process, mentoring, recruiting, and challenging when necessary. All of this without losing sight of a shared goal within a community or a team. Very nice. Welcome to you and have a very nice presentation. Thank you. Thanks so much. And welcome, everyone. So let me start by saying um, I really like order. <laughs> I really like knowing that uh, first is this step and then the second one follows and the third one. And if that fails, most of the time, I'll, I'll, I will have a plan for it. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people uh, work in this way, especially when we talk about work, <laughs> work life. And that's, that's fine. So uh, if, we, if we think again in our work life, uh, those steps will be around like we go to school, we go through all the levels, some levels, we skip the levels and go directly through books. <laughs> it uh, it depends on on, on each uh, individual. Then we start at work. We start our, our work life. If we are lucky, we get presented with a career path. Then we follow it. And we work hard. We learn a lot of stuff. We go through performance reviews. We might go well. We might fail. We will have feedback. We will apply the feedback. We will work harder and then you will go back to performance reviews and if, and if every, everything goes well you might get promotion you will get more workload now you will apply uh performance reviews you will get more and so on and so on until we retire and some people might call this this is the way and that's absolutely fine that works for a lot of people i started in this way as well. But I am here to say that I have another point of view. So I started when I started in 2008. Don't do the math or do the math. I, I don't I don't mind. Um, I started with the way I, I started uh, as, as studying computer science with the goal of becoming a programmer. But at some point of the way, um, it was kind of hard to get uh, a job as an entry level, as a junior. And someone asked me, uh, would you be interested in a QA role? And I replied with, what is that role about? Little did I know that I was about to unlock one of the most powerful questions I could ask. Because the what and why, it's the path of discovery. Curiosity is the base for uh, career path into discovery. Now, there is a common companion uh, within the path, and that's something that just happened to me, which is fear. Fear is pretty common, and fear is a very uh, natural, uh, natural feeling to all human beings. Why? Because we work so hard to get something. We work so hard to um, to achieve something, and actually, also to uh, have to create an image. 
image. So of course we are afraid of losing all that. Of course. And that's absolutely normal. Actually, we recognize this by other name, which is the imposter syndrome. This is mostly common in, in women, but I'm pretty sure that happens also with men. So let me talk a little bit about what is imposter syndrome uh, in case you haven't heard about it. So imposter syndrome is this idea of creating, of having really high expectations, um, but thinking that you are not there, that you're not enough. And that is a long way to get to, to that expectation, even though you might have um, evidence, like good performance reviews, good, really good feedback. Uh, your peers might tell you all the time that you're doing a great job, but for some reason, we don't believe it. We think that maybe they're just being kind. You know? So let's go through five of the general types of, of imposter syndrome. Um, in my case, to be honest, I felt huh, many of those many times and perhaps even at the same time. And that's actually normal. So let's go, let's go through some, uh, all of them. The perfectionist is having this idea that you have to do every single task in the most perfect way. So you might have these really high standards for yourself. And even, even when you do it right, you might say, you might think it was all luck. I mean, I'm not really that good as you think I am. And this is just a matter of luck. So no, um, I, I, I am not there yet. That's, that, that is what the perfectionist says. And the case of the superwoman or the supermom, um, this is the case where you think that you have to be pretty good and excel in all the roles that you have in your life. That includes not only uh, being the perfect teammate or uh, be a very good lead, it also applies to being a really good mom, being the best friend, being the great partner, being a good daughter, all at the same time. And even if by any chance, because life is like this, if you, I know, you don't have the time to dedicate to any of those roles, you will feel like you're, you're not doing enough. Uh, the expert, the expert thinks that she must know every single detail of the field she's in or of a given matter. And if by any circumstance, she's not sure about a detail, about a question, about anything, no, then it's enough. I will never get to that point and I'm gonna know again. The independent, she never asks for help because asking for help will show that she, she is not enough. She's uh, incompetent in, in something. Um, so even when she uh, is successful in one task, probably it comes with a, a, a feeling of burning out because she never asked for help. She tried to do it all by herself. Right? And the natural genius, she thinks that if you have to put a little bit more of effort, then you're not smart enough because if you were smart, it will come super easy. Right? And even if you, when you compare against others, which I don't recommend, but that's something that we do, um, you will see other, others and maybe think, that person may, makes it look so effortless. She must be a natural. She must, she, she must be brilliant. And we're not seeing at all the effort that perhaps this person, and probably not, not perhaps, probably this, this, this person put on this. Um, task. So um, maybe maybe at this point you, you might um, uh, feel identified one, one of the types of imposter syndrome, maybe with all of them or many of them and at different points of life that happens. I don't have a quick fix for this. I cannot tell you how to overcome this. 
um, because that depends on your personal uh, history, on your context, um, on your reality. So I cannot give you a solution for this. But what I can say is to recall the first time that you practiced your, your career hobby, right? Perhaps you started because you were curious about something, right? And you tried it out just to see how was it. And maybe you were not that good at it. Maybe you were okay. Maybe you were pretty bad at it, but it didn't matter because you were interested and you, and you wanted to try again. And after that, it came the question, how can I do it better? And that's another power question. How? When you ask yourself, how can I do it? Uh, how do you do it? How can it be improved? Uh, those questions will lead you to master something. And this is when all those suggestions you might see, of, uh, read this book, I start this, this, uh, this workshop or this webinar, um, follow certain leaders and uh, that's absolutely fine. I actually recommend doing you know, all of that, but perhaps you may ask, uh, well, sure, but I also have a family and friends and a partner and a pet and many other things that requires also my time. And I don't know how to do all this. Again, I cannot give you like a quick fix on how to manage uh, your time because it depends. It depends on your reality. And there are many tools uh, out there that, that, that can help you with that. But what I can tell you is that there are other ways of having mastery. And that is related to your team. I mean, you can ask your team for peer reviews. Their, their opinion is very important too. Like, um, to give you some tricks and pointers on how can this be improved? How you can do this better? You can expose to your team that you're blocked on something. You can also say, um, hey, uh, I have this question. Can someone guide me on this? And on the other way around, you can help a teammate too. Because it, as they say, two, two heads think better than one, right? And in general, be curious about their work. For example, me as, as a QA, for me, it's not enough just to make, it, make making sure that this application works according to some acceptance criteria, right? I'm interested in how it was implemented. So I asked my 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 deaf peers to explain me how, how they did it, uh, what was the thought process, and I may have and I will have more and more more questions. Another question you may have. Uh, so you're telling me, okay, be curious about stuff. Fine. Uh, are you saying that I should be a master? Uh, should, will I be a master of everything? Isn't that a little bit of jack of all trades, master of none? And you will be right. However, you can start building networks okay? because uh, you might not be the master or something, but you will know someone who is. And then you can ask them later. That happened to me with, with, the, with the UX team, for example, at some point. Um, I was attending a lot of uh, workshops from, 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 from the, the UX team because I, I was interested in it. Um, I'm not a master of UX, no. I mean, I can barely make presentation, <laughs> presentations, right? However, now I understand better what they do and I can ask them for feedback, for support, for their opinions on, on something and I can recommend them I can recommend them too because I have a pretty decent idea of what they do and the importance and the effort of, of UX. Being curious also applies to be curious about people. And this is one of the most important things of being a lead. Leadership is not about knowing all the answers. Leadership is about guiding your team in the quest for finding those answers. So even if you're not in the people manage, ma management thing, 
uh, if you're more towards a technical role, like a tech lead or a principal engineer, it also applies because you need to know which are the motivations of your team, which are their aspirations, what they want to learn next, and how do they learn it. So uh, you have to be curious about them too. And the magic, magic happens when you're interested in people outside of your teams, right? Um, when you get interested in people who are very different from you, very different from what you do, uh, you will gain more understanding of this or of, of, of people. And at this point, since you have already invested so much time in mastery and building networks, you will start to care. So uh, at this point, you will care about your work, about your project, about your clients, about your team. Uh, and again, this is not a magic formula. And this is not where it ends, actually. Because also, in this way, at some point, you will get stuck. You will, you will feel bored. Um, you will feel demotivated, even. And uh, that's absolutely fine. My suggestion here is to remember and ask yourself, what do you care for? And then you can match what you care and the skills that you have. Um, for example, there can be something, I mean, not that philosophical, profound, like maybe you really like uh, Pokemon a lot. So why don't you uh, apply your React skills on building a Pokedex? And that would be fun. Or maybe, maybe you can think on, uh, uh, well, I really care about uh, animals, dogs and cats and domestic animals. Why are you not curious about going to your local shelter or any other group that rescues uh, uh, pets and animals um, and understand what they do? And perhaps you can do an app for them. Maybe you can do a web page. Maybe you can do. Uh, an automation of any, in, any process. If you are interested, for example, in food waste, um, why do you go to your local food bank and be curious about what you do? And I mentioned that because that's something that ha happened to us here at Encora Mexico. At some point, out of curiosity, we visited uh, Hermosillos, that's my city, uh, food bank. And being there, they, they asked us, uh, are you curious about uh, learning more about what we do? Do you want to look at other installations? And we said, sure, sure, sure. Why not, of course. And after learning the processes that, that they have around how they rescue food from different um, farms, uh, supermarkets, restaurants, and how they, they redistribute all this food um, via programs or other partners to combat hunger, we cared a lot uh, about this cause. And at this point, we have three ge generations of our apprentice program who have been working with, with equipment in automating one of the processes of create, of uh, rescuing food. This is how they are gaining mastery. This is how they, they practice their hard skills and their soft skills by building an application with real clients solving a real problem and potentially creating a bigger impact out there in our community. Imagine the impact we could all have in our communities if we match what we care for with our skills, because after all, after all we are problem solvers. So uh, this is more like, like more like a circle if you see it in, in 2D. What you care for, you will have curiosity about it, and curiosity will take you to mastery and building networks. And since you have invested time in, uh, on it, you will care more for them. So if you look at it in a 3D, it's more like an spiral, and it's an ascending spiral because you, you will improve your team will improve and your community will also improve. At the beginning of the of this presentation, I mentioned that um, 
to follow this way, uh, you will have a very common companion, which is fear. And I, I cannot say that you need to be fearless uh, because fear is, again, very natural. You will prove blood. Um, and that's absolutely fine. However, what you can have and or what you can be is courageous. You need to have courage because as Maya Angelou once said, courage is the most important of all virtues because without courage, you cannot practice any other virtue, virtue consistently. You can be sometimes kind, you can be sometimes uh, dedicated to learning something, um, you will get blocks in the way, and that's fine. But you need courage to continue to move on, even if you have those blocks. This is a way. Thank you so much. Very nice, Huditi. It helps us to think about our career and lives. And uh, it's like curiosity, it's like a seed that you're going to through other. It's very interesting your point of view and uh, good insights for us about curiosity and career. Very nice. Thank you. And um, as the, the points that you said, do you think you said in the beginning that the um, for women it's kind of more difficult do you think that do you see this in your job a day by day job what do you think do i feel this uh, the, the imposter no, do you no do you think that that the for women it's usual for having more like you said the imposter syndrome do you feel that women have more things to deal in day by day life? Yes, it's more like a cultural thing. And I will speak mostly of my culture, of my uh, reality, which is the Mexican. I do see that we have a lot of expectations that come in, that comes from within, but it's also that, that we hear from our family, from our friends, from our partners, uh, from our children, if you have children, of course. And this is something that is built um, in our minds. We even hear it from other women because we're all in like in the same uh, frequency. Um, you, perhaps you will hear comments like, uh, you work too hard. What about your children? And the other way around, right? Like you might feel, I have so many activities around school that I feel like I'm not enough at work. Yes, yes. Or expectations of your family of, um, so you're not married yet? Or what are you waiting for? And questions like that. I mean, those are all cultural expectations and they're built in as an answer. So there's a lot of work we must do to break from that, to say those expectations are not real. They are not realistic. And build your own and, and be uh, flexible around it. And that's why I think that being curious, like when you try a hobby or something, you, you give yourself that flexibility. Uh, it didn't work this time, but I will try again. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that's okay. And maybe in, in a presentation you make, you might get blocked. That's okay. Go ahead. Yes. Very nice. It's it's good. How did you put curiosity as they started of um, think about that? The curiosity is important for career also. It's very interesting. Oh, yes, yes. Because in, in our career, Things are always changing too. Yes. And yes, technology always change all the time. Yes, and we don't really know what we don't know. So you have to be open about it too. There's always yes. something something to learn and from someone as well. Yes. For for career and for life all the time. All the time, exactly. Exactly. Yes, yeah. 
Thank you. I want to, to say everybody that you can follow, uh, come back to the, our website because we'll be the next session there. You already registered, so you come back there and see the next one. And if you have any doubt, she will be here to text you for some more minutes, okay? So thank you and see you next time. I hope so the uh, next day of the week. Thank you so much.